the famous split. How did you do it? Is it really Jean-Claude Van Damme? At the time was basically, we've got an idea uh, for our new trucks, which is about our dynamic steering, where we've got the person on the top of the two trucks uh, and the trucks are reversing backwards. And so I flew over to Sweden for a meeting. I said, well, that's kind of like when you've seen it on a film where you've got someone on two horses mm -hmm. and the heroes across both horses and there's like a tree stump or a tree and he's in between. The only fact is that you're going backwards. I said, there's not much, not danger, but no, it's not dynamic having just a person standing, you know, even though it's still pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But what about if, if the trucks pull apart and you're going that in the split? So it was a combined effort, obviously, has, having this idea. But at the time, it was still going to be on top of the trucks. Um, and it was like, well, that's fine. I said, but if we move it further down and do it on the mirrors. Now, in discussions, it was obviously, well, who could, you know, could I could find lots of stuff, you know, very flexible, you know, that obviously would fit our criteria, you know, the way they wanted him to look, um, that could do splits. But obviously, it came, the first thing was like, who's the most famous person in the world that is known for doing splits? <laughs> Jean Claude. And being that he'd already been doing other commercials like the Cause Beers, uh, they approached him and he said yes. Um, so we decided to do it on the wing mirrors. But the only thing that I said is that obviously, even though we had a safety system put in place, which you don't see, um, is that I had to make some brackets for the mirrors. So because everyone that's going to watch this is going to go, this is not real because it's impossible that someone can balance with their heels on a set of massive wing mirrors that are kind of like dome shape. Mm -hmm. So we built some brackets, which I said, obviously, you know, in, a, in an interview or if you do a making of, you can show that these brackets that we made, and all it was was basically a platform mm -hmm. that was flat. So when he's got his feet, you know, he could turn them so he could do the splits. Yeah. Um, I flew out, we shot it in Spain, in Ciudad Real, at, at a disused airport. So it was, it was an airport in Spain that's no longer, no, no longer used. And we were there for a week. Um, not so much designing because we knew what we had to do. The fact is that originally it was never going to be shot in one take. So what you see as the final, um, commercial wasn't planned. It was actually done in cuts. So it was a bit more comical in the sense that we still had the, the splits, same narrative, but then you would cut to the driver inside looking out, seeing Van Damme, mm -hmm. kind of looking. It's only on the rehearsal that when we actually did it with a stunt double just to practice it before Jean Claude arrived, that with the camera car with the Russian arm, that we actually got it in one, well, in one take. So we did another couple of rehearsals and it was decided that he's like, well, why do we need to cut this? Just do it with one continuous take, um, which is what we ended up doing. Um, and we had it nailed within about the fourth day. Um, so the rehearsal of it. The one thing obviously, which, you know, people obviously, they'll ask me, you know, oh, it was CG, it was done forwards and played backwards. No, the first thing is that even the best driver in the world reversing, if you're looking at your rear view mirror, you've only got a black road, there's nothing to, um, to focus on, your truck could go anywhere, even though you're trying to keep it straight. So what I decided to do, which was obviously part of my prep, is that we use some of the lines on the on the actual um, tarmac for the you know the runway for one of the trucks to have its wheels on. And then when I did my measurements, which is where obviously where the truck starts to where it pulls out, I had the art department literally make me some markers a kilometer long. So up to the point that we were rehearsing this just on our own with boxes and stuff just to see, you know, uh, the same size as obviously the, you know, the, the actual brackets. They'd actually done for me a kilometer from the main line that we use. There, there could be no variation. They had to measure every other three meters to make sure that the line didn't go further out. And it had to be plumb with masking tape all the way down. And obviously the difference between it not being right is that if it went slightly more than the line, then obviously where his foot is, the truck would go in, and obviously his leg would go past. Mm. So before we even attempted to get to the rehearsals, I had to make sure that it was perfect. There couldn't be even two inches. Mm. It had to be better less, but it had to be. So the line that we had was plumb and we measured off that. Um, and that's how we did it. And if you actually look at the actual commercial, um, I'm directing all the action from another vehicle and you'll see a little there's like a bit like a red mark on the actual moat on the actual tarmac which is where I then start giving the command for the drivers to start pulling apart mm -hmm. and then to hold that position and we shot this at 6 29 in the morning we had two attempt where we were gonna have two attempts here one if we didn't get it right was at sunrise and if we never got it we would then try and attempt it again at sunset mm -hmm. but if we but the fact is during the day we would have done it and 
up until that point and got it with normal, you know, with the light already up. But the idea was that if we couldn't get it at sunrise, which gave you this beautiful look, um, we should attempt it again in the evening when it was sunset. But we managed to get it in the first take, which in the rehearsals, it had gone perfectly. Um, and obviously we got to do it in the one take. So it's probably the most quickest job Apart from the setup, we were setting up at five o'clock in the morning. The trucks were already set up for the night before, but then obviously we'd come in the morning, check everything. We had one little play. We had obviously lights at the airport, which obviously we don't turned off. Um, and we got it right, put the trucks at back number ones, set everything up, and then we were ready to go. So literally once we had to go, obviously, you know, we went through the whole stunt. And at 6.29, so literally by 6.30, we were done. It was... Uh, the shortest day I've had on camera. <laughs> and it's really Jean-Claude Van Damme's day. Jean-Claude, yes. He yes. came in on the fourth day. I'd, pro I'd worked previously with him before on a feature film called Legionnaire mm -hmm. in Morocco for a colleague of mine, one of my mentors, Greg Powell. Um, so that was, that was my last, my only time I'd worked with him. But obviously, you know, it's in that time, obviously, you know, I'd watched all these films and before that. So still a massive fan. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we got chatting, obviously, you know, showing the rehearsal with a stunt double. Or I should say stunt performer. Not so much stunt double, but stunt performer. And then we did it. And, you know, it, it's quite daunting when you got, you know, a truck going back at a certain speed and you got the wind hitting, you know, and it's obviously you're trying to keep your balance, let alone doing the splits. But he did a remarkable job and we nailed it. And it was, um, yeah. It's the only job I'll admit that I actually cried when we cut. I was like jumping up and down, screaming. Yeah. I got out of the car and it was, yeah, it was, it was great. We knew it was going to be a successful commercial, just didn't realize how big it was going to be. I mean, there, there, there were like so many parodies. Shannon Tatum did one. <laughs> they did the Chuck Norris one. Yeah. I mean, it's been copied by so many people around the world. Mm. Um, and when you think that's 10 years ago. Yeah. So it's 10 years ago that we did it. Um, I would say in my career as a crowning moment, it's not an action film, but as something that I kind of helped devise, mm -hmm. put together. Um, yeah, I'm very proud of it. And like I said, I had a great, I had a great team, you know, it's, uh, and the DOP, you know, Ed Wilde, amazing job. Um, it was I mean, great. Everyone knows, like, I think almost everyone, the people at least like who are not, you know, who, who were not like older than 15 or like 12 back then. Yes. They, they know that the commercial. Yeah, it was, um, I mean, I'm still, you know, every time I see it or someone mentions it, I kind of get a grin. It's like, you know, it's a great achievement. And obviously, you know, when something goes according to plan, mm -hmm. you know, the thing about doing something on film or commercial, you know, is that you, you don't have just one go at it, you know, it can take multiple takes. But the fact that we got it on the first take, mm -hmm. um, it was amazing, you know, and I can remember sort of getting out, out of my, out of the vehicle, the vehicle that I was tracking alongside. Uh, and it was just, it was, I don't know, it was, it was like winning the World Cup. I mean, for me as a job, mm -hmm. it was amazing. It was, it was a great achievement, you know, and to do something with an iconic actor that you've grown up with. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. And then obviously when the commercial came out, I think we had 20 million views within the first day. Mm -hmm. um, and then my phone didn't stop ringing with people wanting to ask me, um, had we done it for real? Mm -hmm. Was it done in reverse? Was it in the studio? And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you know, um, they were making, I think they did a making up, but they never really released it. Um, and other people have tried to kind of emulate it, you know. Um, yeah, it's an iconic, it's an mm -hmm. iconic commercial. You know, it's, a, it's the kind of commercial that, you know, in all these programs that they do, like, you know, commercials of the of the years 2000, you know, mm. it'll be there, you know. So, so you, you shot it like very quickly, but how long did it take to to prepare, to, to basically think through everything? How long did you prepare before you started shooting? All right, so I had a couple of meetings, obviously, once the, um, we agreed that was a route we were gonna go, um, I did a couple of trips to, to Sweden. Uh, my homework, we did some rehearsals here, um, just basic tests, um, but obviously because the commercial was going to take place in Spain, obviously that's where we went to. Mm -hmm. um, but I had four days, so four days, you know, um, from you know looking at the proper costume, you know what I mean. Obviously getting the brackets, make sure they would work, and like I said, having our, my my stunt assistant, one of my assistants, um, obviously was able to do the splits um, to make sure that it worked. Because obviously at the end of the day, you know, it was never planned to be done in one take. Mm -hmm. So the gag is John Claude doing the splits. The fact that people then think, oh, it's been done in a studio, or, you know, it's not him or it's a dummy, um, that was really irrelevant. The fact was, could we do it? Can we do it with John Vlog Van Damme on, mm -hmm. on two trucks going backwards? Um, the fact that we, when we got to do the rehearsal, we got to do it and we didn't then just stop, we just carried on going. And I remember when we, um, when we did the commercial, uh, the, actual, the actual day that we shot it, we could have carried on going the whole length of the airport, the actual runway, which it's not so much as it's a world record. We could have gone much longer. They could have written the dialogue 
as in the voiceover, right? Um, much more. They could have, I don't know, he could have been reciting the alphabet, you know, talking about, because we just carried on going. We just had it perfect. I mean, the drivers that I had weren't stunt drivers. They were drivers from Volvo. That's what I was actually wanted, wanted to ask you because I'm, I'm guessing there's not so many stunt drivers who are actually professionals and, you know, driving. No, there's some great, there's some great, no, we've got some great truck drivers. I mean, like I said, you know, but, you know, they can take a truck on two wheels, you know, that can flip a truck. But my idea was, um, and obviously it helped Volvo, apart from their campaign, was that these trucks are meant for drivers. You know, as in obviously, you know, as in, so having a stunt driver that, you know, it's, it's different if you're trying to do a stunt where you've got the truck sliding and doing stuff, then you kind of go, yeah, your average truck driver can't do that. Mm -hmm. But the fact that these guys drive their trucks 24 seven, they're going to drive the trucks in that sense better than anyone else, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, you know, as far as hitting marks, I mean, you know, they weren't sliding, they just had to basically move from one position into another and hold that position. And they did a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, um, amazing, you know, I mean, they were, they were part of the reason it all worked as well, but I mean, you know, having the right people. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they weren't crashing through stuff, mm -hmm. which ironically, the next Volvo commercial that I did, did involve that. Mm -hmm. um, but this particular commercial, you know, which involved precision driving, which basically meant just pulling out onto a line and making sure that it, it followed that, that line that they were on all the way to the end. You know what I mean? So did a great job.